Saving Capital Accumulation and Output, Chapter 11. This chapter focuses on the role of capital accumulation in growth. It shows that capital accumulation cannot by itself sustain growth, but that it does affect the level of output. A higher saving rate typically leads to lower consumption initially, but to more consumption in the long run. Chapter 11 Outline Saving Capital Accumulation and Output 11-1 Interactions Between Output and Capital 11-2 The Implications of Alternative Saving Rates 11-3 Getting a Sense of Magnitudes 11-4 Physical versus Human Capital Saving Capital Accumulation and Output since 1970, the U.S. saving ratio, the ratio of saving to gross domestic product, has averaged only 17% compared to 22% in Germany and 30% in Japan. Even if a lower saving rate does not permanently affect the growth rate, it does affect the level of output and the standard of living. Eleven one interactions between output and capital. Output in the long run depends on two relations. The amount of capital determines the amount of output. The amount of output being produced determines the amount of saving, which in turn determines the amount of capital being accumulated over time. 11-2 Interactions between output and capital. Figure 11-1 shows relation between capital, output, and saving and investment. Green arrow shows that the amount of capital determines the amount of output being produced. The blue and purple arrows show that the amount of output being produced determines the amount of saving and in turn, the amount of capital being accumulated. 11-1 Interactions between Output and Capital The Effects of Capital on Output In Section 10-3, we studied the aggregate production function. We learned that under the assumption of constant returns to scale, we can write the following relation between output per worker and capital per worker. Y over N is a function F of K over N, where F represents level of technology. Assuming that N is constant and there is no technological progress, so F does not change over time, equation 11.1 then is a simplified presentation of the above equation with subscript T for time. It shows higher capital per worker leads to higher output per worker. 11-2 Interactions between output and capital. The effects of output on capital accumulation. To derive this relation, we proceed in two steps. First, we derive the relation between output and investment, and then we derive the relation between investment and capital accumulation. Step one, derive relation between output and investment. Make the following three assumptions. One, the economy is closed, so total investment is equal to total domestic savings. Total investment I is equal to the sum of private savings S by households and businesses and public savings T minus G. Two, public saving T minus G is zero, so I is equal to S. Three, private saving S is proportional to income. It is a constant fraction S, lowercase, of income, thus private saving S, uppercase, is equal to S times Y. This gives us the relation between output and investment as IT is equal to S times YT. Investment is proportional to output. The higher lower output is, the higher lower is saving, and so the higher lower is investment. 11-1, interactions between output and capital. Step two. Derive relation between investment, a flow variable, and capital accumulation, a stock variable. The capital stock at the beginning of year T plus 1, KT plus 1, 
is equal to capital stock at the beginning of year t, which is still intact in year t plus 1, 1 minus delta times kt, where delta is the rate of capital depreciation, plus the new capital stock put in place during year t, that is investment during year t it. Replace investment by expression from previous slide, it equals syt, and divide both sides by n. Then expand the term 1 minus delta times kt over n to kt over n minus delta times kt over n, move kt over n to the left, and reorganizing the right side, we get equation 11.2, which says the change in capital stock per worker is equal to saving per worker minus depreciation. This gives us the relation between investment and capital accumulation. Eleven dash two the implications of alternative saving rates. Combining equations eleven point one and eleven point two gives us equation eleven point three which says kt plus one over n minus kt over n equals s times a function of kt over n minus delta times kt over n. Left side of the equation shows change in capital from year t to t plus 1 is equal to right side equation, which is investment during year t minus depreciation during year t. Implication. If investment per worker exceeds is less than depreciation per worker, the change in capital per worker is positive, negative. 11-2, the implication of alternative saving rates. Figure 11-2 shows capital and output dynamics. The production function, blue curve, labeled output per worker, shows output per worker increases as capital per worker increases. Since saving and hence investment is a constant fraction of output, it has the same shape as the production function but lies below it, green curve labeled investment per worker. Depreciation per worker is a constant fraction of capital per worker and is therefore a straight line from the origin. When capital per worker is zero, depreciation is zero, and as capital per worker rises, a constant fraction of that depreciates, so it plots as a straight line sloping upward labeled depreciation per worker. When capital and output are low, investment exceeds depreciation and capital increases. When capital and output are high, investment is less than depreciation and capital decreases. 11-2. The implications of alternative saving rates. The state in which output per worker and capital per worker are no longer changing is called the steady state of the economy. The steady state value of capital per worker is such that the amount of saving per worker is sufficient to cover depreciation of the capital stock per worker as shown by equation 11.4. Given the steady state capital per worker k star over n found in equation 11.4, the steady state value of output per worker y star over n is given by the production function shown by equation 11.5. 1. Capital accumulation and growth in France in the aftermath of World War II. France suffered heavy losses in capital when World War II ended in 1945 as shown in Table 1. The growth model predicts that France would experience high capital accumulation and output growth for some time. From 1946 to 1950, French real GDP indeed grew at 9.6% per year. Eleven dash two the implications of alternative saving rates. The saving rate has no effect on the long run growth rate of output per worker, which is equal to zero. The saving rate determines the level of output per worker in the long run. An increase in the saving rate will lead to higher growth rate of output per worker for some time, but not forever. 
the implications of alternative saving rates. Figure 11-3 shows the effect of different saving rates. A country with the highest saving rate achieves the highest steady state level of output per worker. Increase in saving rate shifts the investment per worker curve upwards as shown on the graph with the arrow pointing up. The new steady state capital per worker is higher. It is shown by the level of capital per worker that corresponds to the point where the new investment per worker curve intersects the depreciation per worker curve. This leads to a higher level of output per worker in the steady state. Eleven dash two the implications of alternative saving rates. Figure eleven dash four. The effects of an increase in the saving rate on output per worker in an economy without technological progress. An increase in the saving rate leads to a period of higher growth until output reaches its new higher steady state level. eleven dash two the implications of alternative saving rates. Figure 11-5 shows the effects of an increase in the saving rate on output per worker in an economy with technological progress. Extends the results stated on slide 13. You may want to review slide 13 at this point. An increase in the saving rate leads to a period of higher growth until output reaches a new higher path shown by the line BB. An economy in which there is technological progress has a positive growth rate of output per worker even in the long run. This long run growth rate is independent of the saving rate, the extension of the first result stated on slide 13. The saving rate affects the level of output per worker, however, the extension of the second result. An increase in the saving rate leads to growth greater than the steady state growth for some time until the economy reaches its new higher path, the extension of our third result. These three results are illustrated in figure 11-5, which extends figure 11-4 by plotting the effect an increase in the saving rate has on an economy with positive technological progress. The figure uses a logarithmic scale to measure output per worker. It follows that an economy in which output per worker grows at a constant rate is represented by a line with slope equal to that growth rate. At the initial saving rate S0, the economy moves along AA. If at time T, the saving rate increases to S1, the economy experiences higher growth for some time until it reaches its new, higher path BB. On path BB, the growth rate is again the same as before the increase in the saving rate. That is, the slope of BB is the same as the slope of AA. 11-2. The Implications of Alternative Saving Rates What matters to people is not how much is produced, but how much they consume. Governments can affect the saving rate by changing public saving, budget surplus, or by using taxes to affect private saving. Golden Rule Level of Capital The level of capital associated with the saving rate that yields the highest level of consumption in steady state. Increases in capital beyond the golden rule level reduce steady state consumption. 11-2, the implications of alternative saving rates. Figure 11-6 shows the effects of the saving rate on steady state consumption per worker. An increase in the saving rate leads to an increase, then to a decrease in the steady state consumption per worker. 11-2, the implications of alternative saving rates. For a saving rate between zero and the golden rule level, a higher saving rate leads to higher capital per worker, higher output per worker, and higher consumption per worker. For a saving rate greater than the golden rule level, a higher saving rate still leads to higher capital per worker and output per worker, but lower consumption per worker, not only now, but also later, since the increase in output is more than offset by the increase in depreciation as a result of the larger capital stock. Empirical evidence indicates most OECD countries are well below their golden rule level of capital. So an increase in the saving rate leads to lower consumption for some time, but higher consumption later. 
focus social security saving and capital accumulation in the united states social security introduced in 1935 has led to a lower us saving rate and thus lower capital accumulation and lower output per person in the long run social security is a pay as you go system that taxes workers and redistributes the tax contributions as benefits to current retirees resulting in lower private saving as workers anticipate receiving benefits when they retire an alternative is a fully funded system that pays back the principal plus interest to the workers when they retire resulting in lower private saving but higher public saving as the system invests their contribution in financial assets Eleven dash three, getting a sense of magnitudes. Assume the production function f is given by equation eleven point six, y is equal to under root k times under root n. Just like equation eleven point three, equation eleven point seven shows that for this function, change in capital stock over time will be given by the difference between saving per worker slash investment per worker. a constant fraction of output per worker and depreciation of capital stock per worker 11-3 getting a sense of magnitudes in the steady state change in capital stock is zero setting the left side of equation 11.7 to zero we solve for the value of k star over n or capital per worker in the steady state Equation 11.7 shown on the previous slide implies that capital per worker in the steady state k star over n becomes equal to s over delta squared as shown by equation 11.8 steady state capital per worker is equal to the square of the ratio of the saving rate to the depreciation rate combining equations 11.6 and 11.8 gives the steady state output per worker as shown by equation 11.9 a higher saving rate and a lower depreciation rate both lead to higher steady state capital per worker evident from equation 11.8 and a higher steady state output per worker evident from equation 11.9 11-3 11 getting a sense of magnitudes the dynamic effects of an increase in the saving rate Figure 11-7a shows the dynamic effects of an increase in the saving rate from 10% to 20% on the level and the growth rate of output per worker. It takes a long time for output to adjust to its new higher level after an increase in the saving rate. Put another way, an increase in saving rate leads to a long period of higher growth. 11-3 getting a sense of magnitudes figure 11-7b shows growth of output per worker is highest at the beginning and then decreases over time as the economy reaches its new steady state growth of output per worker returns to zero 11-3 getting a sense of magnitudes the us saving rate and the golden rule What is the saving rate that maximizes steady state consumption per worker? In the steady state, consumption per worker is equal to output per worker minus depreciation per worker. What is set aside to maintain a constant level of capital? C over n is equal to y over n minus delta times k over n. Given equations 11.8 and 11.9, the steady state consumption per worker is C over n equals S over delta minus delta times S over delta squared, which is equal to S times one minus S over delta on simplification. Table 11-1 on the next slide gives the steady state values of capital per worker, output per worker, and consumption per worker for different saving rates. Given delta equals 10%. 11-2. getting a sense of magnitudes table 11-1 shows the saving rate and steady state levels of capital output and consumption per worker steady state consumption per worker is highest when s equals 0.5 in other words the golden rule level of capital is associated with a saving rate of 50% 
the average U.S. saving rate since 1970 has been only about 17%, so we can be quite confident that an increase in the saving rate would increase both output per worker and consumption per worker in the long run. Eleven four, physical versus human capital. Human capital H, the set of skills of the workers in the economy built through education and on the job training. The production function with human capital is given by equation eleven point ten, which shows that output per worker is a positive function of the level of physical capital per worker and human capital per worker. Output per worker depends roughly equally on the amount of physical capital per worker and the amount of human capital in the economy. So countries that save more or spend more on education can achieve higher steady state levels of output per worker. 11-4 Physical versus Human Capital Following the lead of Robert Lucas and Paul Romer, Researchers have explored the possibility that the joint accumulation of physical capital and human capital might actually be enough to sustain growth. Models that generate steady growth even without technological progress are called models of endogenous growth. Steady state growth in output per worker depends on variables such as the saving rate and the rate of spending on education even without technological progress since increase in human capital may in fact lead to technological progress. However, the current consensus is that given the rate of technological progress, higher rate of saving or spending on education do not lead to permanently higher growth rate. Next chapter discusses the sources and effects of technological progress.